How do you feel about the message? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> okay, give me Proverbs 28 and 1. Are you wicked? Of course. <laughs> so you are wicked? Of course. Okay. So you're unrighteous? I strive for righteousness. Okay, but you're wicked. If you say you're wicked, that means you're unrighteous, right? Okay, give me 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. We're going to see if he agrees with the Bible today, man. What's your ethnicity first? Mulatto, Sicilian. Sicilian, okay. You guys are so racist. North or, north or south, Italy? Complete mix. Okay. North African, Jewish, Italian. Okay. All Gentile nations. Okay. Now, he said he's unrighteous, right? Yes. So read 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. Cut him up! This is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 6, verse 9. Yes. Know ye not that the unrighteous... That's what's coming to America, man. Complete and utter destruction of this place. Go ahead. Yes, Before their eyes, their houses... Hey, go sit on it, man. Read. Right. Their houses shall be spoiled, and their wives ravaged. What's going to happen to him? Their houses shall be spoiled, and their wives ravaged. What's going to happen to his wife? Their, their houses... And their wives ravaged. That's right. That's what's going to happen to your That's wife, man. Right. You ready for that? I'm placing great emphasis on the first letter in Genesis. Esau, my nemesis, captivity at the end of this. Yeah, how is Shai coming back to give all of us our benefits? Gentiles ain't getting it. We ain't splitting none of the percentages. There end our beginning. Genesis, join the new camp. Also, you can now support the ministry and give alms through PayPal, Zelle, Venmo, and Cash App. The Wada and Shalawan. Varsity Online Academy specializing in Hebrew apologetics. Come learn how to swing sword and defend the gospel. Email me, deacon at genesis144.com. Patreon.com slash deacon genesis. All my new, hot, exclusive content and early releases will go on my new Patreon. My content is no longer on czyn.network. So go there, sign up right now. Patreon.com slash Deacon Genesis. Shalom. We in here. They talk a lot of ish about us. We don't care. It's going down when we around. Yeah, how was Shy coming back taking crowns? What up, Benji? What up, Ephraim? What up, Zebulon? What up, Judah? What up, Nathalie? What up? But see, you know, we got heathens who have a better understanding than our own people. Wow. Right? Wow. And that's bad. The Bible says the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. Right? Right. Because we have failed from glory. You mean Lamentations chapter 2, verse 1. We have failed from our glory. And then give me servants to find horses. You can drop those two, or you can hold them if you can. Ecclesiastes uh, 7 and 10, I think that is. Servants to find horses. Well, 10 and 7, so I can. So these other nations get to reign and rule over us, man. Right. Go ahead. This book of Revelation, uh, Lamentations of the Tool, verse 1. How hath the Lord covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud and his angel and his anger? And See that? Because we anchored the Lord, we have to come down and get ruled over by these wicked, evil, disgusting, reputed beasts. Right. Natural brute beasts. Right. And cast down from heaven unto the earth the beauty of Israel. He did what? And cast down from heaven unto earth the beauty of Israel. So we went from being in a heaven-like state to a hellish condition right. by having to let these nations reign and rule over us. Wow. Right? And it's a horrible thing. This has to be the most humiliating captivity for the Israelites. Right. To have the basis of men mm. who have been stripped of their melanin and pigment, mm. who God said was going to be weaker than us and serve us in Genesis 25 to be ruling over us. That's right. Wow. Read that, brother. It's the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, and verse 7. I have seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. See that? So you have these nations in high positions, but then you have the Israelites at the lowest, the bottom of Sodom, man. Right. You understand that? That's a problem. 
And if you're okay with that as a so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American, then you know what? You gotta die with your enemy. You gotta die with the heathen, man. That's right. Right? You join unto them, you gotta get thrust through with them. That's Isaiah 13. We're gonna finish reading that too. Go ahead. This is the book of Job, chapter 30, verse 8. They were children of fools. Yay! Children of base men. The white man is the basis of the people. They're genetically and biological mutants with all these genetic deficiencies. They're most immoral and evil, and they got to rule over the people of God, man. That's right. Right? right. But it's our fault. But like we, like we read in 2nd Ezra, God's judgment is like a ring. That's right. So the white man is going to get it. It's going to be what James Brown called the big payback, man. Right. Go ahead. They were viler than the earth. What's the white man? They were viler than the earth. Foul, foul spirit, man. They right. bring nothing but evil to the earth, man. That's right. Read that, brother. And remembered not his call it and read it. Fuck you. <laughs> this is looking at two verse one. Read it out. How hath the Lord covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud in his anger and cast down from heaven unto the earth of beauty of Israel and remembered not his footstool in the day of his anger. See that? So we fell from glory. Now we're at the bottom. But guess what? All these other nations still want to be like the Israelites, even though we're in our lowest state. Right. It shows you that we are the salt of the earth. That's right. You understand that? That's Give me right. that in, uh, what do I have you hold? Give me, um, uh, back in Isaiah 13. Uh, and then, Mike, there we go. I'm going to go back on that. I knew I wasn't going to read that. Back in Isaiah 13. I think we're at, like, 15 still. Go oh. ahead. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 13. And verse 4, 15. Every one that is found shall be thrust through, and every one that is joined unto them shall be shall fall by the sword. So if, you, if you're joining with these other nations in America, you want to be a friend of the world, All right. you're going to die with them, man. Read that, right. brother. Verse 16. Wow. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces. What's going to happen to all these kids out here? Their children also shall be dashed to pieces. That's what's coming to America, man. Complete and utter destruction of this place. Go ahead. Before their eyes, their houses... Hey, go sit on it, man. Read. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravaged. What's going to happen to him? Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravaged. What's going to happen to his wife? Their the house is ravaged. That's right. That's what's going to happen to your That's wife, man. Right. You ready for that? You know what you did? If you disrespected the people of God. You disrespected the people of God. You know what that is? Give me Exodus 11 and 7. Right. Let me show you that. And give me 1 Corinthians 2 and 15. Let me show you that I can disrespect you, but you can't say a goddamn thing to me. That's You're right. a cracker on stolen land. Free, brother. This is the book of Exodus 11 and verse 7. Bring it out. Bring it out. But against any of the children of Israel, so not a dog move it. So not a dog move it. So not a dog use a dog. Read, brother. Move his tongue against any man or beast that ye may know how the Lord doeth put a difference between an Egyptian and Israel. Right, and you're the modern day Egyptian, man. That's right. That's right. You understand? You can't tell me a goddamn thing. Read that, brother. It's the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 2, verse 15. Bring it out. But he that is spiritual judges all things. I can judge everybody out here, man. That's right. Read that, brother. Yet he himself is judged of no man. Yeah, you can't tell me a goddamn thing. Right. Back in Isaiah 13. This book of Isaiah chapter, chapter 13 and verse 16. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Hey, what's up, man? You see this sign right here? We need a sign of white. Go ahead, brother. Their houses shall be spoiled. And their wives ravaged. Uh -huh. Behold, I will stir up the medias, Medes. Uh, the Medes, the Medes against them. The Medes, man. That's the Persians, right? Right? Not the Medes. The Medes, the Persians. Who are the Persians today? The Iranians, man. Right. And Hezbollah, they're gonna take Israel down. Right. Right? right? With the help of Russia. That's Ezekiel 38. 
Man. Gog and Magog. That's right. What's up, Ham Mike? Where you from, bro? <laughs> oh, nigga. He's trying to drive through a drive by. Read. <laughs> Which shall not regard silver. As for gold, they shall not delight in it. So, America's fiat currency isn't going to be able to exempt them from this nuclear holocaust that is impending according to the Most High God. That's right. Go ahead. Verse 18. Their bells also shall dash the young men to pieces. Their bowls. Bows like a bow and arrow. Their bows also shall dash the young men to pieces. Now, is it talking about bow and arrows? No. This is a antiquated Hebraic thoughts of war. These are the war weapons we were using uh, 3,000 years ago. Arrows, spears, swords. Right. That's right. So he can only equate that to equate his, his, his vision of the future of what's going on in his time. Now, when a, when a missile is stolen, the American military will say what? A uh, broken arrow? So even they liken their missiles to arrows, man. So once these arrows start getting shot, according to Jeremiah 50, Jeremiah 51, they're not going to go back into his quiver. What is the quiver of the modern day arrow, the missile silo? When, 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 when Iran and, and Russia and North Korea shoot these nuclear missiles, the missiles are not going to go up, propel, turn around, come back down and go into the silo. God's going to make them press that button so America can be completely destroyed according to the Bible. That's man. a fact. Read. This is Hosea 12 and 10. I have also spoken by the prophets and I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. See that? So they're breaking things down. This is why John the Revelator says he's seen locusts in the air with, with scorpion tails. Mm, That's right. the fighter jets with the gunner on the back of it. Spats. So it's using figurative speeches, metaphors, and it's all analogous to war, man. That's right. You know America's going to be destroyed according to the Bible? No more long holding hands and walks in the park in that day. That's right. You got it with red now, he's really going to get a suntan when that ICBM missile started to put that heat down on him. That's, That's right. right. Right? Go into it, brother. This book of Isaiah chapter 13 and verse 18. Bring it up. Their bows also shall dash the young men to pieces. And they hey, man, you're going into slavery. Did you know that? Slavery. Yeah, slavery. Go ahead. And they shall have no pity on on the fruit of the womb. See that? All these kids, man. All these kids in America, they're going to be destroyed. Right. All these white people out here walking on stolen land, they're going to be destroyed, man. Right. They're going to get cooked with this nuclear heat. You know, they are already going to die by the sun, but they're going to get cooked by nuclear heat. Right. Right. Look at them. Look at them. Look at his skin. White people look like, like aliens, man. Right. Right. All of the nations got pigment and melanin. You think that's funny? America's got to be destroyed. You know it's true. Hey, come on over here, man. Let's have a talk. You believe in the Bible, bro? Of course. Is it in your backpack, though? Your Bible's in your backpack? Where you work at, bro? Okay, you just came down here to listen? Okay. How do you feel about the message? Okay, give me Proverbs 28 and 1. Are you wicked? Of course. <laughs> so you are with me. Of course. Okay. So you're unrighteous? I strive for righteousness. Okay, but you're wicked. If you say you're wicked, that means you're unrighteous, right? Okay, give me first Corinthians six and nine. Right. We all see if he agrees with the Bible today, man. What's your ethnicity first? Mulatto, Sicilian. Sicilian, okay. You guys are so racist. North or north or south, Italy. Okay. Yeah, North African, Jewish, Italian. Okay. All Gentile nations. Okay. Now he said he's unrighteous, right? Yes. So read 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. Cut him up! This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous, the what? that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Are you going to inherit the kingdom of God? No, I'm not. <laughs> I know. So living for, man. You might as well just lay down in the street, bro. 
and play in traffic and see if God is really looking out for you. Okay, so you can just live a whole life of unrighteousness and then at the end on your deathbed say, white Jesus, forgive me, and then you made it into heaven. What's your Christian denomination, bro? Oh, he's a Catholic. Okay. So do you believe in something called the transubstantiation? I know your doctrine better than you, man. So, so the transubstantiation is, is when you eat, give me Hebrews 6 and 4. I'm going to show you guys how. Yeah, so you eat, when you eat the food, you believe that, well, that's Catholic doctrine. I know. That Jesus really comes alive in your body when you eat them stale ass crackers and that nasty wine. Wow. Okay, well that's that's Catholic doctrine. Now let me tell you how that is against the Bible, because what you're literally doing is crucifying Jesus again. Right. And the Bible condemns that. Read that, brother. This is Hebrews chapter six, verse four. Bring it up. It is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame for the earth which drink the Catholic Church puts Jesus Christ to an open shame. Right. Not only, not only all the pedophilia scandals in there. Now I know that to be shame. Listen, if it happened to you, we don't need to know about it. But I'm saying that it's very prominent and prevalent within that denomination uh, or uh, uh, Christian branch called the You know? So you believe that Jesus, is, yeah, you believe in the Trinity and all that? I didn't say it was good, but it is that it came up. That's your background? Yeah. Like family background? These days, I'm born again. Born again Christian. Okay. Just Christian. He said he's a born again Christian. No flavor. Nothing. All right. Well, do you know how one is actually born again according to the Bible? Except Jesus Christ. Except Jesus Christ. So, so can you find me? I'm sure you have a smartphone. Can you find me any verse that says, this is how you're born, this is what born again means? Huh? There's one fact, one fact. Jesus Christ, he said to Jesus Christ, acknowledging your original sin. I agree with you on that, but I said the biblical definition of being born again. Oh, I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. Give me 1 John 4 and 7. Bring it up. First John 4 and 7. Sure like all those things. I'm going to show you how you can get born again. Right? Five. Five and one. God. This is the book of First John, chapter 5, verse 1. Bring it out. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him that beget loveth him also that is begotten of him. So begotten and born, same thing, right? So that's how we know we're born of the most high God. How you doing, sis? We were saying that that white lady, she was racist earlier when you asked the question about that. So be careful. They're still lynching and hanging black. All right. Right? You know the Italians had a hand in the slave trade? Yeah. The slave force for generations. How do you feel about that? can't do anything about the past, you can only do handle things in the future. Like what? Not repeating something. Okay. Yeah. Like what would justice look? So if we can't do nothing about the past, that means how long of a uh, statute of limitation do we put on heinous crime? I don't see how much you're going to So when I talk about slavery, you say, oh, that was the past, we can't do nothing about the past. So I'm asking you, okay, if, if, if I murder you, how long should go by till I shouldn't be charged and put on trial for that? Wow. That's above my... That's you above see my, that? You see that? The yeah, white man's a hypocrite. And don't go be home. I'm not what? That is a hypocrite. I'm next. My grandmother's a dog. Okay. 
The Caucasian, the Caucasian man. What's your father, bro? Because God says you are who your father is. So what's your father? Same thing, a lot. He's mixed. He's 50 50. Okay. What's his father? His father is Sicilian. His grand, his mother is black. Okay. Or that. So your father's 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 father. Can you tell me what he is? Probably still Sicilian. Okay, so according to God, you're a European Caucasian. Right. Because you are who your father is. There is no mix. Let me show you that. Go ahead. Oh, numbers one and eighteen. Numbers one and eighteen. This is Just so you don't go around saying, man, I gotta teach you, man. You know when a white man came into, we had to actually teach you guys how to bathe, show you guys how to be civilized. You guys were caves. White people were coming out of the caves. We had to civilize you guys. You guys were still <laughs> walking on your knuckles, man, when you guys came in to us. You understand? Yes, right. What is the point you're trying? Like, are you trying? The to point is this: I have to teach you, like we've been teaching you. Wait. Numbers chapter one, verse eighteen. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month, and they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers. So your pedigree, your race, your ethnicity is determined by your father's lineage. It's a patriarchal society. That's right. You understand? Right. And America's a patriarchal society even though they don't want to tell you. This is why you get the father's last name here. Right. You know, it's patrilocal, meaning um, when a woman marries, she's supposed to go off with the husband. The husband's not supposed to live off of her family. She's supposed to live off of the husband and their family. But America don't want to say that. America it's so, look at that, look at that evil and wickedness. Bad. That's evil and wickedness, man. Running around here. Wow, man. Flamers, man, pillow biters. So, I'm just curious, what, what your goal today, like what was it that you're trying to He's do? saying, what's my goal today? Like, what is it? What is my goal today? Yeah. My goal is to let white people know their fate. I'm the teacher of the galaxy. To let you know your fate, man. You understand that? I'm the only defender of the galaxy. So you're not promoting something specific on that? I'm okay. promoting... Is there a specific I'm, conversation that you want to have with people? Or, like, I'm just trying to understand what... Like, I'm willing to have any conversation with you that you want to have. Okay. And I'm better than you at anything, too. We can race, we can jump, we can play football, we can play whatever, chess, checkers, yeah. Call of Duty. I'm better than you at anything. So then your point is actually should be able to reestablish Give me, dude, I thought you never asked. Give me... Is there, he said reestablish, that's the correct word. It is reestablished. Because we are, give me Micah 4 and 8. The Israelites are the ones who were ruling during the time of Adam. The Adamites and Adam's people were the prototype Israelites. They had control over all flesh. So what God is trying to do is take the true Israelites, which is the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, and bring them back to their place and set them on high, restore them so that they can have supremacy over the whole world so that then there will be world peace. That's and right. teach you guys the law, statutes, and commandments. Come. You want to hear all of that in one verse? I'm just trying oh, he to said no, he don't want to hear the Bible. How's, how's, how's Give me Micah chapter 4. I'm going to show you. It's, gonna, it's happening because for every Israelite that wakes up to the fact that he's not an African-American, that he's an Israelite, and we got to keep laws, that can be commandments, that stop drugs, that stop violence, that stop murder, that stop gangs. And so we're all waking up to who we are and coming back to God's laws, that can be commandments. And once enough of us do that, then God said he's going to send his son to save us, bring us back to the land, right. enslave the other nations that enslaved us. Right. After a thousand years, let them back to their land. Right. The whole world is at peace. They right. continue serving us. There's an ethnic hierarchy, right. but everybody's happy. That's right. So you should want us in power. Give me Micah chapter. Yeah, yeah. This is Proverbs chapter 29, verse 2. What happens when the Israelites rule the world? When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. Right. People are not rejoicing right now. Read. But when the wicked beareth rule, are white people in power? Are white people rulers right? The rulers of the world right now? I mean, not everywhere, but here in the U.S. and Europe, yes. Who there. controls the world? Well, I mean, you think white people are in power in China? Huh? There's no white people in power in China. There's no white people in power in Okay, the superpowers of the world. Name them. Why? Huh? Are people? 
the superpowers of the world. That includes landmass, economics, and military. I still have I'm not being conspiracy theorists. I think there's six six major families. They got control of the money. Okay, and Rock Towns, Rockefellers, yeah, yeah. they're still white? Not all of them. Some of them are in America. Now. Jewish? Well, that's yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, brother. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. So people are in mourning because the wicked are in power and white people are in power. So who are the wicked? No. No, I don't. I don't. Come on, I've been looking for one. I've been looking for one honest white man, and you almost had me. But you won't admit who rules the world. You're part of the problem. Expose him. I don't say I'm definitely part of the world. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you're, you benefit from white supremacy. No. Yeah, because you're standing on stolen no. land. No, I, I work extremely hard just to You're, you're standing on stolen land that. that was taken by white supremacy. So therefore, you benefit we're from not, white supremacy. I'm not going to agree. We're not going to agree. But I you do appreciate what you're trying to do. Why would you agree with something so heinous and evil that you did? You're trying to remove yourself from your past. Uh, no. I'm, I'm, as a 41-year-old white male. Bro, you're 41? 41. Bro, you look 67. Yeah, because I've worked really fucking hard my whole life. There's been no truth. Yeah. Like, there's no proof. Listen, man, if you don't know how to exercise your white privilege, that ain't my fault, bro. You know what I'm saying? That ain't my fault. If you don't know how to exercise your white privilege, I don't know what to tell you. Listen, if black people rule the world, I'm gonna be right up under the. <laughs> I'm, gonna be getting, I'm gonna be getting all the benefits of the blacks that rule the world. Read that, brother. It's the book of Micah, chapter four, and verse eight, in the NLT. As for you, Jerusalem, the citadel of God's people, your royal might and power will come back to you again. The kingship will be restored to my precious Jerusalem. That's right. So the Israelites going to rule the world, which are the so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans. That's, That's right. right. And it said it's going to come again. Well, we weren't, it can't be talking about Solomon, because Solomon only reigned for 40 years. Right. right. Solomon only reigned for 40 years. Right. Right. So go ahead. Verse 9. But why are you now screaming in terror? Have you no king to lead you? Have your wise people all died? Pain has gripped you like a woman in childbirth. Ripped and grown like a woman in labor. You people of Jerusalem, for now you must leave the city to live in the open country. You will soon be sent to exile to distant Babylon. And then what's going to happen when we get to America? But the Lord will rescue you there. He didn't rescue us from ancient Babylon. Right. We went from the Babylonian captivity to the Persian captivity. Facts. To the Greek captivity. Right. Yep. To the Roman captivity to 70 AD. Talk about it. That's you understand right. that? Then all the way up till today, the revised Roman Empire. Right. Right? So that's a future prophecy, man. I had you in Micah 5. And then you were still in Isaiah 13. And we was dealing with World War III, which is here, man. Alright? And it's not going it's not going to stop until it comes to an ultimate fulfillment. That's right, man. A complete culmination in America's destroyed, along with the thieves of the earth. The wicked of the earth, which is the white race. Right. Read that, brother. This is the book of Isaiah 13 in verse 18. Go. Their bones also shall dash the young men to pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb, and their eye shall not spare children. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldeans, the Chaldees, Chaldees, excellent, shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. So that's what's going to happen to America. When God overthrows, how God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, that's what's going to happen in America. You know why? Because America is Sodom. Revelation 11 and 8 tells you that. America is Sodom, man. Right? Give me Revelation 11 and 8. America is Sodom and Egypt at the same time. Right? And so we're the only ones, you mean Ezekiel 9 and 4. We're the only ones man enough and brave enough to come out here and condemn this place, man. That's right. Everybody else scared of it. That's right. right? Go ahead. Give me Ezekiel 9 and 4. Read that. Let's right? look up Ezekiel 9 and verse 4. Read it out. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for abominations 
that be done in the midst thereof. So we're the only ones man enough to sigh and cry about all the evil, injustices, systemic oppression, flat out executions of our, of our people. Right. Sexual immorality, pedophilia, homosexuality, all of that. We're the only ones willing to come out here, downtown Seattle, with every major metropolitan area, and condemn this place for that, man. That's right. right. That's right. These Christians ain't even doing that. At all. The Muslims definitely ain't doing it. The nation of Islam, where the hell are they at? Right. Right? Where did y'all witness that? They're going to sit there and give you a goddamn pamphlet. They're not going to condemn and rebuke this place. We are the men of the Lord and the prophets that are out here signing and crying. That's right. Right? So read that, brothers. It's the book of Revelation, chapter 11, and verse 8. Yeah. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. What's America called? Sodom, Sodom and, and Egypt. Egypt. America is Sodom and Egypt, man. Right. Bunch of homosexual, pedophiles, lesbians running rampant, transgender, and then us being in bondage, all the idolatry, every symbol in America is linked to some type of ancient Babylonian, Mesopotamian, Egyptian idol. Right. That's a fact. Right? And these people worship it, not even knowing. Read Revelation 13. Go ahead. Right? This is the book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 7. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. See that? And that's what's going to happen. And that heat going to feel like eternal fire when this lake of fire happens in America. Right, the lake right. of fire, America going to be a lake of fire, man. That's right. right. It's going to feel like you're burning for eternity. That's right. right. When you first get dropped in this thing, man. Then the Lord going, then the Lord going to turn you all the way up, man. When he put the furnace, put the wood, put the wood in that furnace with those other missiles, man. When John the Revelator in Revelation 9, we don't got to get it. When he's seen all these missiles, matter of fact, get that, brother. You were already in Revelation. Give me Revelation 9. And start at about. It ain't just going to be one missile, man. No, at all. Give me, uh. Ooh, this is good. This is good. Get, uh. Uh, 13. Revelation 9 and 13. It's the book of Revelation, chapter 9 and verse 13. Bring it up. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels, which are bound in the great rivers you face. So there's some angelic activity over there in the Middle East. That's what the, that's what they mean by the Euphrates. Because the focal point, the geocentric center of the earth is Israel. That's right. Right. Everybody's fighting over that land, been fighting over that land, been wanting to conquer the people in that land. Hell, America's giving them 100 billion in aircraft and missiles because they believe they are the people of that land. Mm. So all this whole World War III is going to be centered behind those imposters, those 1948ers and corny fakers, man. That's right, man. Right? So go ahead. Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loose which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. Secure how many people are on the earth? For to slay the third, third part, part of men. That's how many people going down here, man. Right. One third. Well, everybody in America has got to die. Right. But the whole world is going to lose one third of humanity according to God. You understand that? Go ahead, brother. Verse 16. And the number of the army of the horse. Now, here's what's going to destroy. He's going to tell you what's destroying the third part of humanity. Go ahead. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000, thousand, and I heard the number of them. See that? So he's seen this nuclear missile. And he says 200,000, thousand. Now that's about 200 million. Now here's the problem. There's only about 5,000 nuclear warheads on the earth. Wow. So he can't be literal here. Well, he's in the Greek it says a myriad. So imagine him seeing 300 missiles falling on America. It's going to look like a myriad of missiles. Wow. You understand wow. that? Wow. Go ahead. And I heard the number of them. Verse 17. And thus I saw horses in the vision. 
So he's saying they look like horses. Why? Because back during John's time, you had these, these horses, when they would migrate, as they do to this day, if they're on uh, the frontier, if you will, right. they're migrating in great numbers. And they're not breaking rank. Horses is all migrating in great numbers. That's how he sees the missiles. Go ahead. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire, and jacinths, and brimstones. Jason. Jason. Now all these components and elements are what you can find in nuclear warheads today. That's right. You understand that? Go ahead. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions. And out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. Because when the missile hits, it's not the, pro the, the propelling part of the missile that detonates. It's the, the warhead of the missile that detonates. Right? So that's why it says their heads is the line. The, the, the front of the warhead. Read that. Verse 18. By these three was the third part of men killed. By the missiles were the third part of humanity killed. Go ahead. By the fire, and by the smoke, and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouth. Boy, the missiles is hot. They say hell is hot. The missiles is hot. America's going to be destroyed, man. This is a place, a God-forsaken place. You understand that? That's right. Go ahead. Verse 19. For their power is in their mouth, and in their tails. And their tails were like unto serpents, and had heads, and with them they do hurt. War heads. Right. You understand that? What do I have you holding? Well, that's how this place is going to be destroyed, man. You understand that? Ah. Oh, yeah, back in Micah 5. We needed that. This is good for you heathens out here. For you Gentiles. Micah 5 and 8. Right? Go ahead, brother. This is the book of Micah chapter 5 and verse 8. Get out! The remnant left in Israel will take their place among the nations. See that? So... There's, because one third of humanity has to be destroyed according to God, right. there's only going to be a remnant of every nation. Right. You understand that? Thanks, King. Go ahead. Jimmy Zachariah 14, 16. Let's prove that. And read that one more time for the people. Back in Micah chapter 5, verse 8. The remnant left in Israel, the what? The remnant, remnant left, left in Israel, Israel will take their place among the nations. So a remnant of us is going to take our place over the nations. Right. Right? Go ahead. This is the book of Zechariah 14 and verse 16. Bring it out. And it shall come to pass that every one that is left of all what? That every one that, that is, is left, left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem. See that? So one third of humanity's gotta be destroyed. So it's only a remnant of the nations and a remnant of us. That's right. You see that? Come on. Go ahead. Back in Micah chapter 5, verse 8. The remnant left in Israel will take their place among the nations. They will be like a lion among the animals of the forest. Like, the Israelites going to be like lions in the Olympic forest. Right. Lions in the goddamn Madagascar. Right. That's and right. what these other nations going to be like? They will be like lion among the animals of the forest. Like a strong young lion among flocks of sheep and goats. What do a lion do when he gets around... A whole flock of goats and sheep. Kill them! <laughs> That's right, brother. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not just kill them. Kill and eat. Beast. Kill and eat. Beast. Don't just kill them and leave them killed. Kill and eat. Right. Like, like a lion among flocks of sheep and goats. Pouncing and tearing as they go. With Pouncing and tearing as they go. Like, whoo! Man, they had, a, they had a video of this lion. And it said, this lion was feeding on a giraffe for a whole week. And the lion was literally in a food coma, bro. He could barely, like, he was able to come up to him, touch him. The nigga was in a food coma, bro, barely opened his eyes, because he ate a whole giraffe for a whole week. This is how it's going to be during the time that the Israelites are like lions among these nations, man. Right? They're going to be so full of killing blood, we're gonna be so satisfied, man. Absolutely satisfied like that lion was that fed on that giraffe for the week. Three. This is the book of Habakkuk, chapter three, verses three through five. God came from Timon and the Holy One from, from Mount Paran. Paran. <laughs> Salah. 
The Muslims love that verse. His glory covered the heavens, and the earth was full of his praise. And his brightness was as the light. He had horns coming out of his hand, and there was the hiding of his power. Before him went the pestilence, and burning coals went forth at his feet. Verse 6. He stood and measured the earth. He beheld and drove asunder the nations, and the everlasting mountains were scattered. The perpetual hills did bow. His ways are everlasting. Now that's powerful because it's calling, it said the everlasting mountains. So when people say everlasting means you never had a beginning, that's a scripture to prove that when it says everlasting, because everlasting mountains are the everlasting nations. So these everlasting nations have not existed forever, but they're from old, they're from antiquity. So the word for everlasting can also mean ancient. Right. That's a precept to prove that. So all the ancient nations are getting destroyed when the Most High sends his son back. Now, you see, how is Shai going to actually get busy on all these nations? Well, according to Isaiah 63, he's going to get busy on the Edomites because God God's son has a vendetta with white people. That's right. They, that's right. they rape, rob, and murder and that's enslave right. his chosen people. Right? So as far as the rest of the nations, you had 144,000. Who Jeremiah 51, 19, and 20 says, we will be the battle and weapons of war to destroy these other nations, man. Ah, you understand that? That's right. That's what's coming. Back in Micah 5, one of my favorite chapters. The rabbi is going to have to deal with this chapter tomorrow. Read that. Back in Micah chapter 5, verse 8. Read up. Counting and tearing as they go, with no rescuer in sight. Verse 9. The people with no rescuer in sight. That means he's not the savior to the other nations. Scary black people, I know. Scary black people. <laughs> Read that, brother. <laughs> verse 9. The people of Israel will stand up to their foes, and all their enemies will be wiped out. Right. And that day, says the Lord, I will slaughter your horses and destroy your chariots. Right. Verse 11, I will tear down your walls and demolish your defenses. I will put an end to all witchcraft and there will be no more fortune tellers. So that's when we're all right. Right. New covenant theology, new covenant language. When we get back to our rightful position on the earth, all things will be set right and restored. So all the nations should want that, man. Right. And I had you holding Jeremiah 51 and 27. Let's read that too. We're getting all the text that I called for. Go ahead. It's the book of Jeremiah, chapter 51, and verse 27. Here you go. Set, set up a standard of the land. Set up a standard of the land. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 51, and verse 24. And I will render unto Babylon and to all the inhabitants of Chaldea all their evil that they have done in Zion. See that? So all, everything America has done to the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American, that recompense is going to be rendered on their own heads, man. Even the East Indians and South Indians and the, you know, the, the Sikhs and all of that, all of these other nations are going to be destroyed, man. Right. They're here in this melting pot. Called America, taking our swag, wearing our Air Forces, you know, wearing our jeans. But at the end of the day, they can never be like us, man. They not like us. They not like us. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. All the evil that they have done to Zion, that they have done in Zion in your sight, saith the Lord. Behold, I am against thee. Bring it out. Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, says the Lord. That's a destroying mountain, man. The destroying mountain is America. This place is going to be utterly destroyed, man. Right. And that's what we hope for, and that's what we hasten. That's right. We hasten the day when we can put all these other nations in chains and slavery like they did us. That's right. Read that, brother. O destroying mountain, says the Lord which destroys all the earth. See, America destroys all the earth. Right. That's why Revelation 18, I think that is, get that, where it says, destroy him that destroyed the earth. No, no, that's not Revelation 18, that's Revelation. That's gotta be 11 or 12. 
It's gotta be the end, end it's like the last verse of 11 and 12. Read. On destroying mountains, say the Lord will destroy all the earth. And the destroying mountain that destroys all the earth. You understand that? Go ahead, brother. This book of Revelation 11 and verse 18. No, no. And the nations were angry. And Why are the nations angry? The nations are angry because when Christ comes back, they're going into slavery. Go ahead. And thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets. Who the only one that get the reward? Thy servants, the prophets. To and to the saints, and then that fear thy name, small and great, shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. What are you gonna do? Shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. So God gonna destroy those that destroy the earth, and the ones who destroy the earth are the white race, man. They're great robbing, pillaging the whole earth. Completely burning it down, destroying it. That's right. Pillaging it. That's right. Yeah. Taking all the oil, taking all the natural resources. Right. All this oil that they're taking from the earth is is depleting from the mechanics that the earth crust needs and the many layers that it has. Right. Wow. Right? So they think they're doing some type of good by extracting these natural resources, but it's really hurting the earth. Go ahead. Call and read. Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 25. Behold, I am against thee on destroying mountains, save the Lord, which destroy all the earth. See, ancient Babylon didn't destroy all the, all the earth. But America is. Right. We've got 300 military garrisons, bases, colonized every country, made these countries peripheral and semi-peripheral countries. Right. Go ahead. This is the book of Numbers 35 and verse 33. So ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are, for blood defileth the land. And the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that, that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. That's right. Go ahead. Which destroys all the... Back in Micah chapter... I mean Jeremiah chapter 50. 51 verse 25. Behold, I'm against thee on destroying mountains, right. saith the Lord, right. which destroy all the earth. Right. And I will stretch out my hand upon thee and roll thee down from the rocks. And roll you down from the rocks means take America from a high place to a low place. Go ahead. And will make thee a burnt mountain. Make them a burnt mountain. Right. Ancient Babylon didn't get destroyed by fire, right. but America will. Go ahead. Mm. Verse 46. And they shall not take of thee a stone for a corner. That means complete destruction. Right. Go ahead. No a stone for foundations, but thou shalt be desolate forever, saith the Lord. Set up a standard in the land, blow the trumpet among the nations. Right. So warn the nations that are going to come against America. Go ahead. Prepare nations against her. Call together against her. The kingdoms of Iraq. Kingdom of Ararat. That's Turkey. It just so happened that Turkey trying to get inducted to brick. Wow. wow. Go ahead. The kingdoms of Iraq. Mani. The kingdom of Benin. That's Iran. Why is this in the Bible? And Ashkenaz. And Ashkenaz. That's the Russian territory. So God is calling the nations out by name that's going to destroy America. That's right. Russia. What comes with Russia? Brazil, India, China. That's right. Then it calls out the kingdom of Benin. That's Iran. What comes with Iran? The other Arab countries. That's right. Then it calls out one of America's allies of NATO, Turkey. Which Revelation 17 that will say one of the horns will flip. It's got to be Turkey. That's what it seems like with the prophecies and what's happening today. Go ahead. And Oscar Nas is pointing captain against her because the horse caused the horses to come up as the rough caterpillars. Prepare against her the nations with the kings of the Medes. King of the Medes. That's also Iran. Right. Go ahead. The captains thereof, and all the rulers thereof, and all the land of his dominion. So all of these nations gonna come together and destroy America. That's a fact. I mean, you better keep shopping because there's gonna be a time where you're gonna be in the shop, and we gonna sell you. Right. We're gonna put you on display in our shop and sell you to the Sapiens. 
Give me Jer uh, Joel 3. Let's prove that. Uh, and we're going to put these heathens in a shop. While he's shopping now, it's going to be his last shop because he's going to be in a shop on display on an auction block. Jeremiah 51, 20, 